Ex-governors Darie and Jolly Nyame released from Kuje prison. And Ohane Zindigbo alleges that there is a plot to keep Senator Ike Kwaramadu away from Nigeria ahead of the 2023 elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. Former governors of Plateau State Joshua Darie and Jolly Nyame of Taraba State have been released from Kujay prison months after they were pardoned by the National Council of State. Darie and Nyame were granted pardon by the President Muhammad Buhari's government on the 14th of April 2022. Both former governors were serving jail term for corruption allegations until they were granted a pardon by President Buhari a development that received a lot of negative reactions. Now, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Guru Abuja, had on Tuesday, 12th June 2018, sentenced Darie to 14 years' imprisonment on the charges of criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of funds to the tune of 1.6 billion naira while he was a state governor of Plateau. Now, Nyame was also to serve a 12-year term uh, for diverting 1.64 billion naira during his tenure as governor of Taraba. What's joining us to break this down is Jide Ologun. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Logun, for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start by going to the basics, because th this, is, this release is necessitated by a presidential pardon, and that's what we'll call it. Um, but for the benefit of those who are wondering um, what a presidential pardon is, it's obviously a, the power that is on the president um, against every other law to grant pardon. But I'm sure that you have a better way of explaining this. And, and I think the question for every Nigerian or on every Nigerian's mind is, is why these two? You know, when you talk about state pardon, it is an act of mercy, forgiveness, or clemency. And in the words of Justice John Marshall in the United States versus Wilson, it's an 1833 matter. He described it as an act of grace. And that is another way of saying that even though the two former governors have been prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced, is to serve their jail terms, the Council of State, led by the President, has given an act of grace to pardon them. And basically, we have four types of pardon. You have full, partial, absolute, of course, conditional a pardon. And in this case, it appears they are enjoying full pardon. And is this a constitutional action? The answer is yes. If you look at Section 175 of the Nigerian Constitution, 1919, as amended from subsections 1 to 6, it gives the president the prerogative of pardon. And historically speaking, you know, the state pardon can be traced back to the early 60s. But before we go into that, if at all, we have the Council of States, whose responsibility is to advise the president before the state pardon was granted. And you have the president himself as the chairman, the vice president as the deputy chairman, all, all former presidents of the federation, all former heads of government of the federation, all former chief justices of Nigeria, the president of the Senate, the speaker of the House of Representatives, and all the governors of the states of the federation, and of course the attorney general of the federation. So, here is a very robust representation that should have considered all the variables. And it was recommended and approved that the president could grant them pardon, not just these two personalities, but 157 orders. And what made people to react the way they reacted is to consider is it because they are high profile personalities and looking at the allegations that led them to prosecution and conviction, serious acts of corruption, 
you know, the citizens are now asking what to be the rating of Nigeria as a nation that claims to be fighting corruption. Then are we not reinforcing corruption in the nation if they can go away with such every you know very enormous uh, levels of allegations for which they were convicted? But like I mentioned earlier, if you go back to 1966, before the Civil War, the Yakubu Gowon regime had done Chief of Afrikaulawo, leader of the Action Group, and the former Premier of the different Western Region, and also Chief Anthony Enaho journalist and top politician then, you know, who moved the first motion for Nigeria's independence in 1953. Both of them were convicted of treasonable fellow in 1963. So President Shehu Shagari pardoned General Yakubu Gowon. General Bangida granted pardon to Indu Kairabo and uh, Tunde Thompson. General Abu Salam pardoned General Lucia Gobaso. So we can trace it down, you know, empirically that this is not the first time. But as mentioned earlier, people are worried that are we really fighting corruption? That is where we are right now. And even after the pardon was granted, they were kept in the correctional facility for about three additional months and recently finally released. So another question came up with all the attacks on the Kuje correctional facility. What happened? Were they kept in the bunker? They also, and this is where we are now. But on whether the president has the constitutional power to grant state pardon, the answer is yes. And of course, based on the advice of the Council of States. Let me go back to, you made mention of uh, the crimes that these men were put away for. These men were uh, convicted for um, funneling funds, public funds, or diverting these monies. And I'm talking about monies to the tune of billions, and these are taxpayers' monies. Um, again, because this is the issue, and Mr. President has decided that these are the men, among, alongside with 150 more people who he would pardon, uh, Nigerians are wondering, is there not a contradiction of sorts? Being that Mr. President is a man who said, rather ran on the heels of, uh, I want to fight corruption, zero tolerance for corruption. And then at almost at the eve of, um, you know, rather at the close of his government, he's pardoning treasury looters. What sort of legacy is Mr. President trying to leave for himself by doing this? And these are two people whose notoriety is uh, for, for looting, uh, for want of a better way to put it. You know, morally speaking, and of course, making reference to the need to fight corruption, this may be a dent on the profiling of the president. I mean, two governors who allegedly embezzled and misappropriated such uh, funds at the expense of state's development are now being left off the hook. And the impression some may have is that, okay, if you're gonna commit any crime against the state, make it so big that you can find your way around. And again, we need to mention the case of the separation of powers. You can imagine the rigors that the judiciary went through in investigating, uh, prosecuting these uh, defendants, we call them defendants under the uh, new Criminal Justice Act. And then um, at the end of the day, while serving their jail terms, the government just turned around to say they're going to release these persons. And the implication of that is that it will appear they never committed any offense against the state. And that's why I ruled out the four types of pardon. So this is like an absolute pardon. So they are free to go back and be heavily involved in politics, seek to lead some areas of the country again. And another school of thought is saying that perhaps because these are political big wigs, they may be released to support the political agenda of the government. Whatever the case may be, personally, as a matter of my opinion, I believe that we have not done justice to the mandate of Section 15, Subsection 5, of the Nigerian Constitution as amended that says that the state shall abolish corrupt practices and abuse of office. And so right now, 
we are seeing as governors who abused office, who were corrupt, convicted by the court. In actual fact, the day the Supreme Court confirmed the uh, conviction of Governor Dari, I was in the Supreme Court the same day in Abuja, even though he had some of his political uh, supporters around. And when a matter goes to the level of the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, and you must have applauded the judiciary for taking the pain to go through prosecution to ensure that the strong message you send down to those who may want to be corrupt, that the laws of the land will not permit it. But alas, somewhere along the line of starting the jail terms, they were granted state pardons. Again, this may be an assignment for the National Assembly. If you look at Section 4, of the Nigerian Constitution 99 as amended. He says that the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. So we may look at this lacuna and give very stringent conditions for the grant of state patterns in the future. And that may be one of the ways of correcting such. But as we stand now, the president, subject to the advice and approval of the Council of State has that constitutional power to grant state pardon. Remember that in March 2013, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan granted pardon to a uh, former governor of Bayesa State, Chief Medipre Alamesia, and of course, Lieutenant General Oladipo Dia retired, and Major General Bukarim Hadisa, and the former MD of Bank of the North, Fatima Abulama. So we need to check critically how we exercise state pardon. And I must say here, it's a global concern, not just in Nigeria. And the cases in the United States of America where questions were raised on the rationale behind grants of state pardon. So here we are now. But I suggest that if we are really going to fight corruption seriously, we must ensure that we thoroughly consider the cases of those we enjoy state pardon. I do re remember that um, an American president was pardoned by his former vice, who also became president. And we saw how that turned out in the polls for him because he lost his second term um, because the Americans were unhappy about the state pardon. It was a Watergate scandal, I remember. Uh, and, and that's why he lost that election. So let's look at the politics here now, because a lot of people have wondered why Mr. President has decided now, and not even earlier on, but now to release these two gentlemen. And they're wondering, is it political? And what role will this play, again, in the politics of things, knowing that we're you know, just at the bend of the campaign season, and it's going to kick off in earnest in a few weeks. Um, will this play a role in, you know, will this affect would this one way or the other also, um, you know, play a role in how we cast our votes in the coming election, especially um, for the APC? You know, you, you would expect that with the caliber of personalities we have here, they have very commendable political influence on the citizens and the electorate. And if I know Nigeria very well, the fact that a notable figure has gone to serve a jail term may not erode the respect given to the personality. And in their respective states, they may be able to swing the uh, voting pattern for political interest. But having said that also, it's also subject to the politics at the party level. If you look at them, um, uh, Delta State, for instance, the former governor of Delta State, Ibori, who was jailed for 13 years in the UK for crime and came back to Nigeria where he has not even been convicted, came back exercising very strong political influence. But right now, he appears to be losing that interest, that political influence in Delta State. He's really battling to retain his position. So, what I may just say, that almost every decision has political undertone. But like you mentioned earlier, I think you were trying to make reference to uh, what happened 
under President Gerald Ford. That was in 1974 in the USA, who granted full and unconditional pardon to former President Richard Nixon over the involvement in the Watergate scandal that led to his unceremonious resignation from office and any other crime he may have committed. Many Americans felt that that was undeserved and it was a controversial decision. Although the president stood his ground, but he paid a very heavy price. His popularity rating dropped. In 1983, uh, President Bill Clinton, uh, Clinton also pardoned a millionaire you know, for generally, generally considered to be an oily bag. So there are, these issues are there. And politically speaking, all of these decisions may be political in nature. Mm -hmm. But to what extent that we affect the people now who have been embattled by the hardship, the inflation, the unkept promises of politicians in the country, I may not be able to say mm -hmm. in what direction it will go. I believe that right now, Nigerians have been trained and groomed to take independent decisions on who they vote for, particularly when majority of Nigerians have tasted the bitter fruit of corruption upon the land. Okay. Now, just let me backtrack a bit to something that you said. I mean, you talked about the fact that, you know, you made reference to James Ibori, the former governor of Delta State, and how much popularity he has and the backing he has politically in the state. Many would attribute uh, the, the political prowess of the um, governor of Delta State now um, to uh, James Ibori that he had necessitated he coming to power, but that again is, you know, by the side. Um, if what you have said is anything to go by, politically and otherwise, um, what does this say about us as a people? Is it that we have um, chicken senses that, you know, after a while we seem to forget about these things, or, uh, or have we grown a thick skin of sorts to gloss over corruption so much so that we forget about how much um, that we've been stolen from and then we still throw our weight behind these people because it does, um, it does, it does mean that there's a lot for us to ponder about before 2023, doesn't it? You know, we, we have a lot of adjustment to make, but let me also say this. It is recently that we are beginning to witness many citizens who are actually rising up to ensure that they keep into the class of those who can actually vote. Maybe before now, those who go out there to vote are those who can hardly exercise discretion. If they can enjoy 12,000 error from the politician to his election, they will go ahead and vote. But with the new revolution we are having in the country now, where some citizens are even mobilizing for some candidates, irrespective of whether the candidate has money to give them or not. I think we are growing our democracy. And if you look at some of the restructuring that we have experienced in our electoral laws, for instance, the, the uh, transmission of results electronically and other measures that we have introduced, we may have some shockers coming forward. But then, having said all this, we still have a percentage of electorate, maybe about 40%, that can be influenced and flow with the tide of where the politician is leading them without considering the merits. But basically, there's a new awareness in town now that you either secure your future or allow the politicians to moderate your future. But having said all this, I can let you know that these personalities that have just been released back in society we still exercise some high levels of political influence. I should let you know that the day I made reference to in Abuja, I was shocked. And what shocked me, even though the court uh, confirmed the conviction of governor, former governor Dari, I witnessed political supporters being given money right in the lobby of the Supreme Court. So you can imagine to what extent uh, people can go, perhaps because of poverty or on, 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 on trained uh, partisan loyalty. But we still have a lot to learn 
about the fact that the sovereignty actually belongs to the people, and the people should conscientiously exercise that sovereignty without allowing politicians to swing them and later deal with them in a very bitter manner. And I also hope that the politicians, if they are learning at all, would have seen the level of insecurity in the country and just begin to start a new paradigm of making the nation a better place for all. Because the insecurity of one is the insecurity of all. And if you look at Section 14, subsection 2B of the Nigerian Constitution, I think as amended, it says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. And when the primary purpose of government fails, almost everyone is endangered. I mean, we have seen that even at this point in time, the so-called bandits are threatening to kidnap the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, and of course, Governor uh, El Rufai of Cardinal State, for whatever reasons, best not to go. And that shows us that right now we have a very vulnerable society, and the National Assembly is also rising up to say, okay, at this point in time, we need to question the competence of the president. We may be moving against the president on an impeachment exercise, which I can tell you, if you look at the procedures under the Constitution, it's like they're trying to move a camel through the eye of the needle. Okay. But having said all this, I believe we should grow as a nation in you know, being decisive on choosing those who manage our resources, because the commonwealth should be generated for the common good and not for the embezzlement of a few and the oppression of men. Talking about embezzlement now, because you see, it's not enough, if you ask me, um, to put away somebody for, um, you know, stealing or looting federal or state treasury. Uh, but then again, where is the money? Because Nigerians will be asking that question, where these monies recovered? Um, I mean, under the Buhari administration, we've seen all sorts. We've seen, the, for the pension scam, a slap on the wrist. We've seen allegations of dollar scandals, et cetera, et cetera. And half the time, uh, the percentage of the monies that we get back is nothing necessarily to write home about. So uh, in a case where these men have been pardoned and brought back into society, uh, what about the monies? Um, because again, we are facing a, an economy which is also having going through a downturn of sorts. Inflation uh, is at its peak. Um, should we not be questioning where the money is? I mean, Nobel Laureate Walesha Inka, I'd like to quote him directly, has said that um, uh, he slammed the president. He said that um, the presidential pardon for these former governors uh, is an action that could be referred to as an egg squashed against Nigerians' faces, and that all of this shall not be forgotten or wiped away in a hurry. Serap, on the other hand, is suing Mr. President, saying that this uh, particular presidential pardon is not in the interest of the average Nigerian. So again, do we get these monies back? You know, this question should have gone to the accountant general of the Federation who is in charge of our resources. But then he himself is based in an 80 billion Naira uh, embezzlement scandal. So you see the spiral ring of corruption going around. And again, may I also join you in asking another question where are all the monies recovered from Abacha? You know, at the time, the government claimed to have spent them on massive infrastructure. But I can let you know that as we speak right now, there are many roads that have collapsed in Nigeria. You can see that even though we spent 100 billion naira reportedly on turnaround maintenance of the refineries, the refineries are not function, even though we are promised that one of them may come functional very soon but at a time the nnpc had zero remittance to the federation account so you, you just begin to go round and round this thing of corruption and for a regime that strongly promised to fight corruption nigerians like the book the beautiful ones are not yet born are still looking for that leadership that we actually fight corruption because you may be shocked at the level of alleged corruptions under this regime than you have ever heard in the country before now. But we just want to advise 
The Nigerians should keep hope alive and not allow the despair to sink to them because we are just passing through a place. And to my president and commander in chief of the armed forces, I wish you the best, sir. And that when your tenure is over, you may be recorded on the golden side of things. You won't express your desire. But, you know, if we evaluate the situation of the country now, it means that you have a lot more to do before you step out of office. And so, fi fi finally, yeah. finally, Mr. Logan, before we go, because you, you're, you're, you're trying to give Nigerians some hope, some hope. And this is the hope that Nigerians expected when they voted for Mr. President in 2015. Again, in 2019, even though not, some, not many people voted, Mr. President came back into power. Where is the justice? Where is the equity for the average Nigerian who seems to be working so hard, putting in so much and getting nothing only for a handful of people to take these monies home and get a slap on the wrist or a presidential pardon, or sometimes swept under the carpet. Where is the justice? Where is the equity for the average Nigerian? I mean, you're trying to give us hope, but is there even a shred of it that we, one can actually hold on to? The elders say that hope dies last. And permit me to make reference to Rwanda, African nation that was in a very horrible pit. Uh, somewhere along the line, a new leadership emerged, led by Paul Kagame, who we may not claim is perfect, but changed the narrative in that country by reuniting the people and advancing the fortunes economically. And most recently, Tanzania is on the good book of the globe in terms of good leadership. And at a time, Singapore was a poor region. So we can go on and on. If you know what is going on in Ghana now, they have more uh, additions than subtractions in terms of making progress. And you know, at a time, Ghana was like an outcast when it came to consider uh, nations in the West African region. So and that's why we keep hope alive. And for someone like Gideon Olubu, looking at the enormous resources God has deposited in Nigeria, I'm hopeful that when we have the resourceful leadership, the narrative will be quite exciting. As we speak right now, Nigeria retains the status of having the largest deposit of open gas in Africa. Okay. We have the gold, we have different kinds of resources in the country, we have fantastic weather. So we are just waiting patiently for a new order in the nation, maybe okay. a renewed Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I say okay. this, don't give up, you will go up. So okay. please, let's keep up a lot. It shall be well with Nigeria. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Nice Judo Logo is a legal practitioner. Always a pleasure to have you join us on the program. Thank you, God bless Nigeria. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we get back, we will be discussing Ohaneze's plea to ECOWAS over the Aquarium Madu organ harvesting case. Stay with us. <laughs>